How are we doing folks? Thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. Today we have a interesting comparison. A customer emailed me saying he's trying to decide between two particular tractors. And they're a couple of good machines too. And I don't think he's gonna go wrong either way. And sometimes, well, these are good comparisons to do, but it doesn't always mean that there's one right answer, you know? So I think it's good to kind of go through it objectively let the data kind of steer you in a direction, but sometimes it's more than data, right? Sometimes it's based on the dealer that can support your area with sales and maybe parts and service, or maybe you hate one dealer <laughs> and you don't want to do business with them and you're looking for an alternative. So these are a couple of good models here and something I haven't done a comparison on, but we have had both these models come through here has used equipment, great machines. So we're comparing well, actually, let me back up. I'll tell you the, the email that he sent me. One of the emails. We had several back and forth exchanges. I looked at a brand new cab, Kubota L3560, the Grand L3560, beautiful tractor, and a cab John Deere 3039R. I think I have it narrowed down to the, one of these two machines. I've always been partial to Deere. You know, that's, I, I can relate. The Kubota seemed like a bigger machine, though slightly less horsepower and no need for wheel spacers. The Deere had a rear remote with the joystick, the thumb button on the joystick. But that's kind of how a lot of deer machines are set up is when they run a third function, they have they give you the, the thumb button on the joystick, then they just leave the remote off the back end. And so you can get a hose kit to run it up front for a grapple if you want to. Also, if I went with the deer, I could keep my current pallet forks and save some costs there. So forks aren't included with the deer, but he already has a set of John Deere forks that he could keep and use. Now, the first big difference right here. All right, now these are brand new machines. As far as I know, the only significant difference is the John Deere has that third function, okay? The Kubota was $43,400, and the Deere was $49,800. Now, if I'm doing my math correctly, that's $6,400 difference for a rear remote. Well, third function remote, one remote. Now, my response to him, well, I give him a response just based on that alone. I know enough about the tractors. Well, I'll get you, I'll get you my response here in a little bit. But let's go through the specs here because these are the top two brands. These are competing head-to-head -head machines right here. All right. And uh, you're gonna see the first spec that we look at is horsepower. All right. The we're gonna use tractor data. All right. That's kind of a, an easy way. You can get this data from John Deere's website, from Kubota's website. Um, same thing with the other brands, Coyote. You can do all this, these comparisons with any of these brands, you know, Coyote, LS, Mahindra, TYM, you name it. Tractor data is normally pretty reliable, okay? So 38.2 horsepower on the John Deere, 37 horsepower on the Kubota, all right? So you're splitting hairs there. I mean, it's a 1.2 horsepower, not the end of the world. 28 horsepower, oh, let me, let me start with John Deere. A little bit of a, of a difference here though, 31.1 horsepower PTO on the John Deere 28. Okay, so about a three horsepower difference on the PTO. That is a little bit more significant. Not gonna be game changing, but a little bit more PTO horsepower never hurt anybody. You're gonna still run the same size attachment. Okay, maybe still a 60 inch tiller or a 60 inch brush hog on there. Maybe a 72 in the right scenario, but the three horsepower isn't really changing the size of attachments. This is giving you a little more oomph. Okay, a little more power when you're, when you're putting down to the ground. Next thing, let's look at let's look at their hydraulic flow. All right, what are they pushing? So hydraulic total flow on your John Deere, you're looking at 13.9 GPMs with 5.3 going to steering. On the Kubota, 12.8 less. Okay, less flow on the Kubota, 4.7 GPMs. All right, again, a GPM here or there is not game changing and breaking anything, but the Deere does have more. Okay, next up, three-point lift, all right? How much can your three-point lift, how they rate these typically 24 inches away from the base. So you have the, the ball ends, you know, the end of your three-point arm, go 24 inches out from that, that's how much you can lift. On the John Deere, we're looking at 2,200 pounds. Pretty good amount. On the Kubota, now Kubota normally does pretty darn well here, 2,646 pounds. So 400 and almost 50 pounds more on the three point. Now Kubota generally does beat deer in this schematic now, or in this, um, this data point. I will say you start to look at some of those other brands like the Coyotes and the LS and whatnot, normally they are going to crush both of these brands 
uh, in those areas. Maybe not across the board, but typically speaking, they're going to exceed them. Okay, interesting data point here. Let's talk about machine weight, something I always like to look at. Um, this is a very useful... Well, it's important to know how much your machine weighs for trailering it, uh, for sizing certain attachments like uh, snow pushers or plows, um, for trying to figure out how much additional ballast weight you need to safely um, counterbalance your tractor when using a loader. So just one of the data points there that can come in really handy. Uh, the John Deere in the cab is gonna weigh, we're gonna round this number to 3,600 pounds, all right? 3,600 pounds on the Deere, 3,900 pounds on the Kubota, okay? So the Kubota, a couple hundred pounds more, 300 pounds more, 300 pounds more, okay? So that's uh, not quite 10% more, but that's probably what, 8% more, something like that. So that's fairly significant. I mean, it depends where that weight is distributed. A lot of that will be kind of right throughout the frame, uh, the axle, the transaxle area, um, you know, mainly on the back end, but there could be a little bit of that in the front end as well. So. That's a, that's a fairly significant difference there. Probably one of the more significant differences. Horsepower hasn't really been much. Hydraulic flow hasn't been a big difference. I guess three point lift capacity, you know, a few hundred pounds more on Kubota as well, but probably not game changing in my mind. So overall, we're, we're, fairly, we're fairly close with these specs. Now loader lift capacity. Now both these tractors are gonna have two different loader options, all right? So they're gonna have a, a cheaper, option and a more expensive option the cheaper option will lift less weight it'll lift it to a lower height as well so the more expensive option the premium option don't know which loader was included on either one of those tractors could be what maybe a thousand dollar difference i don't know if anybody's priced those recently if you had loader option one loader option two let us know put a comment down below and let us know if there's a a significant price difference what that might be okay john deere now you'll see little tidbit of information for you guys because you may be looking in the used market too. The John Deere 3R series used to be called the John Deere 3X20 series. So you had your 3120, your 3320, your 3720. I missed the 3520. 3120, 3320, 3520, 3720. All right. Then they switched to the 3R. They dropped off that, that base model, the 3120, and now they have the 3033R, 3039R, and 3046R. Okay. So um, those basic tractors, the tires, the chassis, the loaders, all that are the same. They've been the same since like 2006 or five, whenever the 3X20 came out all the way through current production. Okay. Very minor tweaks, same loaders, but they've rebranded those loaders. All right. Originally they were called the 300X and the 300CX, then the H160 and the H165, and then the uh, 300R and the 320R. All right. So it gets very convoluted, but if you can match up the better and worse of those loader models across the generations, you'll be okay. I say that because uh, Tractor Data still lists the H165 on their website. Loader spec doesn't change at all. It lifts 1,600 pounds at the base of the loader arm, all right? Not way out in front, but at the base, so like the max, the perfect world scenario, 1,600 pounds to 102 inches high. Kubota has an LA555, which is the base loader, and the LA805, which is the better loader. Now, the better loader is going to lift 1,715 pounds, so 100 pounds more to full height, which full height is 105 inches. So a few inches higher, 100 pounds more. It is lifting more, it's lifting it higher, but it's not significant, right? I mean, technically, on a, right on a piece of paper, which is the bigger number, the better number? Kubota wins, but it's insignificant. All right, so those are some, some main specs, some things that I look at, all right? If I'm picking out a tractor for myself, then I need to know what this machine can do if it's gonna meet some of my needs or not. It's not everything. There's other features like John Deere has a twin touch, side-by-side -side pedals for their hydro transmission, one for forward, one for backwards, reverse. Kubota has something called a treadle pedal. Now the Grand L series has a improved treadle pedal that's, um, I definitely think it's quite a bit better. It's still a treadle pedal, but it comes closer to mimicking a side-by-side -side pedal in this configuration. So it's, it's more tolerable, I guess I'll put it that way. Um, I, I can't stand the regular treadle pedal. I know some of you out there have it and love it. That's great. Um, others can't stand it either. So that's just a personal preference and that could lead you one direction or the other. Uh, both hydro machines, there is a, a wonderful feature on the Kubota Grand L's that's, um, maybe they call it Hydro Plus, HST Plus, something like that, where within your 
low, medium, and high range, you can actually go uh, up or down within that range. So you have a fast and a slow position within each range, and you get six ranges, technically, versus three on the, on the John Deere. Uh, both of the cabs are wonderful cabs, okay? These are premium cabs. They're uh, gonna be as quiet as you can get out there, very comfortable, everything's situated where it should be. Uh, you're gonna find plenty of operator, operator space unless you're a giant, and then there's just not a lot of options for you. Go up to like a five series uh, and get some room there. I've never seen a loader on either of these not have a quick attach. Uh, I know the John Deere does come standard. I believe the Kubota on this series of tractor does come standard. I could be wrong. I think there were some old Grand L's, like maybe the L40 uh, series a long time ago. I feel like I've seen some pin buckets on there, but skid steer quick attach on the Kubota, John Deere quick attach on the Deere. Uh, category one three-point hitch, 540 RPM rear PTO. Mid PTO is an option. Field addable on both of these if you want to add a front mount snow blower. You can put a mid mount belly mower on the deer. I don't know if you can still do that or not on the Grand L's. That'd be a question for you folks out there watching this video. Now, one piece of information that Tractor Dad is not historically great at, and sometimes websites, the OEM websites are and aren't, are tire sizes. And so um, there may be multiple tire sizes on there, depending on the tread pattern that you're getting, and uh, could give you a slightly wider or narrower footprint. Oftentimes you're going to see on manufacturers websites and tractor data too, for that matter, they list what I think is outside of axle to outside of axle for the width. And it gives you the perception that these tractors are, are super skinny, right? Like maybe four and a half foot or something like that. And that's not accounting for the, the tires that are on there as well, which add maybe another two feet to the width. But, um, I know that the three R tractors could definitely use wheel spacers on there to widen and get some additional stability. I'd always recommend seeing, and both of these tractors should have at least reversible hubs on there so you can have a narrow or a wide width on your rear tires and the front tires too, for that matter. Um, so start with that and then add wheel spacers if you need to. Add liquid ballast, rim guards, our channel sponsor. But these tractors on the specs really you're kind of splitting hairs almost, right? The Deer won some, the Kubota won some. The winds weren't that significant. The biggest one was the weight of the machine on the Kubota. And maybe the three-point lift, okay? But beyond that, and, and those, those aren't really, they're not changing, they're not moving the needle a whole lot. So the data point for me that moved that needle a whole lot was the price point. That's a significant difference there of, what we say, $6,400. Yes, that does include a third function from Deer that could be 1500 bucks. So maybe that gets it down to a $5,000 price difference. Well, I can buy a heck of a lot of attachments uh, for five grand. I mean, I like the idea of starting as close to zero as I can when I'm buying a piece of equipment or a truck or whatever, right? <laughs> so uh, these are top end, high quality machines. You're, you're not gonna be disappointed either way. And this is one data point. I would encourage you to go out and talk to, if you can, two, three, four dealers of whatever brands you're interested in and get quotes from all of them and see where they land, right? And you're not buying just on price point. There's other factors that go into it as well. And in this guy's case, you know, he already has John Deere forks too, right? So that does save a cost for him, but it's not like he couldn't sell off John Deere forks and recoup part of that cost and put it towards some skid steer quick attach forks either. So that's, that's the thing to think about. You know, folks oftentimes when they're considering a new tractor or new tractor attachments is, well, that, that, that money's just not all gone, right? I mean, even if you're going to own a tractor for five or 10 years and some attachments, well, the new prices always go up, okay? And so that helps keep used tractors and used attachment prices propped up as well. You can use something for two, three, four, five, 10 years and recoup 50%, 60, 70% of what you paid for it originally, okay? So a lot of ways to look at it. Um, but look at the big picture. Reliability wise, you're not going wrong either way. So I told him to go with the Kubota. I thought that that was a slam dunk, no brainer. You know, we just had a beautiful L3560 come through here uh, two or three months ago. Uh, just a gorgeous machine and had a, had a chance to use that for a little while. It was actually years old. It was five, six, seven, eight years old, something like that. Only had something like 17 hours on it. 17 hours. The guy just didn't use it. So I love finding machines like that uh, for resale, but I didn't want to get it too dirty, but I had a chance to use it and it was uh, an amazing machine. 
I'd like to get more of those Grandels in there if I could. So yeah, let us know what your thoughts are. What way would you go? And, and I know there's a lot more besides the Kubota and the deer. You could throw, I, I'm tempted to throw the, the Coyote. You know, I've been on the Coyote train lately, but sometimes you, you know, it just helps to take two models and compare those, right? If you start spreading it out and comparing everything else, it just gets convoluted and, and kind of a, just a mess. So this was fun, fun to go through and kind of dissect, look at it. And sometimes you see big disparities between different models that are out there that are kind of competing head to head. Not so much in this case, a couple of good choices. I don't think you go wrong either way. If you have a question, if you need help picking out a tractor, well, we sell tractors too. So you could check out our website, see what we have for sale. Send us a list of what your, your projects are, your budget. We'll help you find that right machine for you. Sometimes we have it, sometimes we don't but maybe we can help you with attachments as well. So we sell a whole bunch of those and all we do is ship them all over the country every day of the week. So go to goodworkstractors.com. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.